Now, most of us derive a lot of social interaction from our jobs. It's where we spend the majority of our time and we make a lot of friendships. But imagine if you no longer had that environment to go to and you had to make an effort every day to find meaningful connections. I was used to walking into an office and being able to say hello to this person or hello to that person or to collaborate with the person next to me. And then when it closed, it wasn't, it wasn't the change of work that was problematic because I continued to do the same thing that I was doing, except that it was in a different environment. I started working from home. Sometimes quiet is lovely. Sometimes quiet is really peaceful. Um, and I love that. But sometimes quiet is, I can't say this is frustrating to anyone. When I want to speak with someone, when I want to share something with someone, when I want to be involved in an experience with someone, which makes those experiences richer, and there isn't anyone to do that with or share that with in whatever form, that feels very lonely. There is a ravine near my home and I go for walks a lot, partly to get out, um, but partly just to say hello to people as they're walking their dogs. There's something that changes in you when you actually interact with people. I don't have hi, how are you conversations. So when those deeper conversations are missing, there's a huge gap in my life. So when my company closed, it was not as I said, work continued, my client continued, but those people who had known me for 25 years, who had seen me five days a week for 25 years, were not there anymore every day. You're taking away more than someone you work with. You're taking away someone who is my friend. You're taking away someone who knows about my family. You're taking away someone who knows my life. We get it and so, so well said. If you're just joining us now, we are doing a City Line Reel today, the whole hour dedicated to loneliness, something that is prevalent right now. So we've got Dr. Karen Gordon, our relationship expert with us. We have Dr. Ami Rokash, author of Loneliness, Love and All That's Between Talking About This Issue and you've spent a lot of time studying this. So I want to talk, I want to start by talking about the different kinds of loneliness that could exist. All right. I don't know if we can talk about different kinds as loneliness is very subjective objective experience always incredibly painful. Uh, there, there are three situations that can exemplify how loneliness is experienced. And by the way, I don't refer to it as a feeling, it's an experience. Mm -hmm. One is when we're alone, geographically isolated. And that's what most people think about when they think about loneliness. The second is when we are amongst many people, like in, on the subway, we can even touch them and we feel so disconnected. Some people have a loving family and they don't feel that they connect with them. But the worst, most painful loneliness is loneliness in, a, in an intimate relationship where you're supposed to be close, that's your best friend, and you feel very disconnected. And it has all kinds of effects that we may or may not talk about later on. Okay, so Karen, um, you've also looked at the different sort of situational loneliness yep. experiences you can have. What have mm -hmm. you come up with? So for those of us who kind of were said, 77% of us said we have experienced some kind of loneliness as adults. Yeah. Uh, just kind of go through some of these scenarios. Uh, different, this is all from Psychology Today. New situation loneliness, where we kind of go to a new city, a new job, and can we f kind of feel lonely. I'm different loneliness, where you're kind of like, you just realize you kind of don't connect with the people um, that you're actually around. Uh, no time for me loneliness. Where this one is interesting, where you're obviously you have friends, and all of a sudden they maybe have a baby, or they um, they get a new job, and all of a sudden they have no more time for you. Right. Isn't that interesting in terms yes. of like the situation? Um, unt untrustworthy friends loneliness, uh, where you have friends that you don't really think you can trust. Uh, and I actually added entrepreneur lo entrepreneur loneliness Ooh, yeah. because when I started my business in my 20s, that's when I really experienced loneliness for the first time. Absolutely. And I was like, why? What's wrong with me? And I was like, and it was because I was so dedicated in my business, but as an entrepreneur, and this is a huge thing for a lot of entrepreneurs, if you don't have networks, you have to be intentional. And so once I kind of figured that out, I, it was it was better. But that's a really big one. So it was interesting with the tape. You know, people that are working remotely, that it can be a big thing. Like they, there's a positive thing of working remotely, but that is a big thing in terms of all of a sudden you don't have that kind of that connection. And then if you think it's happening more and more in society oh, that yeah. people are, are working from home. Right. Now there are a lot I, of people watching the show. Yeah, what would you like to say? Uh, 
I, I wrote about the, the loneliness of the psychologist. Mm -hmm. ah. I am a clinical psychologist. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. seen many people, and sometimes there are people that I would love to befriend, and I can't. I'm yeah. not allowed. I have to stay a little bit removed from them. Oh, you mean people that come yeah, to you see know you as a client? Yes. Yeah, and I, and I can connect. I have, like, the most amazing clients. Yes. All of them? But, oh, well, mine are. Honestly, them. I have the most amazing clients, <laughs> but I am not. At, we are not allowed to be friends with them. You're never allowed to be you friends not, with them? Not, 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 not when they're all, like, not, not, they're not if they're a current client. No. Oh. Not current, but so not you current. later. On, you, so yeah. that is, I totally That's know what it's. That's yeah. I never thought about that. And that really is unfortunate, because I have, like, Because you love great them. clients. Yes. And clients I really kind of connect yes. with, but you're not allowed. So that's where yeah. it's a little different. Like if it, no, those are my counseling clients. My business clients, totally different because totally. I'm not a therapist yes. with them, right? So it's a very different. And that's actually one of the reasons why I started going more into the business side because I found the counseling side. It can be a little bit lonely. It's lonely. It can be lonely. For yeah, everyone so I know that's exactly what you're watching talking about. right now and thinking, okay, I live alone. Does that mean I'm lonely? Yes. Let's make the distinction right now. There is a distinction is between a distinction. loneliness yes. and solitude. Am yes. I right? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, lo loneliness is painful, and usually it happens when I don't want it. Yeah. Solitude is when I take time alone. Mm -hmm. I want to be alone to do things that I can do only alone. Yes. To create, to write, to think, yes. to plan, to walk in the woods, and just to refresh. It's a very refreshing experience. Yeah. So now, when, when, well, I, when I talk about loneliness and I said that it actually causes physical illness, I do want to sort of think about where in the body loneliness is actually affecting us because I did not understand that until I read the research. How can being lonely be like smoking more than 15 cigarettes? What's it doing to my body? Shucks, it, it does all kinds of things. Okay. Research suggests that it affects the cardiovascular health. It uh, depresses the efficiency of the natural killer cells, which um, affects our immune system. Mm -hmm. uh, cortisol is exerted in higher uh, amounts, which may cause obesity. Um, it, it contributes to depression. Mm -hmm. uh, it contributes to even dementia in old people. And, and something I found in the literature, which is amazing, is that uh, young people, when they get a flu shot, if they are lonely, the effects of the flu shot is, is lowered than if they weren't. Oh my goodness. Wow. So yeah. something's happening physiologically Absolutely. in your body. Yeah. Yeah. Your body's in a state of almost panic yeah. or stress and therefore things are happening um, from a physical perspective. Thank you for the information. I know we're just skimming the surface.